In the last video, I showed you an overview of the stealth system that I created to give myself privacy and security while living in my Prius. The system has undergone some upgrades and it is working great. I have been living in my car now for 154 days and during that time, I have never had anyone bother me or even see me living in my car. The secret is a privacy system that hides me even when my car is in plain sight. In this video, I will show you how to create the blackout panels, which are the main components of the system. This video doesn't include the sunscreen for the windshield, which I will cover in the next video. I began creating the blackout panels in September 2020 before life got interrupted by the COVID pandemic. So, this video combines several videos that I shot over a year as I created and continuously upgraded the system. One of the biggest upgrades has been a video surveillance system that allows me to see outside when the blackout panels are installed. I will post a separate video in the near future showing you how I installed the video cameras and the monitor. So the best material that I found for making the window uh, blackout panels is this uh, corrugated plastic, and this comes in sheets. This is the same type of material that uh, people use to make yard signs, especially for politicians during election seasons. And so what you want to do is just make sure that you measure the windows that you need the panels for and get panels that are big enough to fit. Mine were 24 by 36. Um, I figured that that size panel would work on both the side doors and the back window. So I was able to get this on Amazon for five sheets for only $33. And I can put a link to that at the bottom. So the way that you're going to figure out how to cut your corrugated plastic sheet to size is by rolling down your window and holding the sheet on the outside. Hold it tight and draw along that window, that outside that window frame. Keep moving your hand up to hold the part tight where you're drawing and just go through and sketch out this window frame. Since the corrugated plastic was so, sheet was so large, I went ahead and did a first drawing and then cut it down so that it'd be easier to hold and handle. Um, then I came back here and I'm gonna double check my lines and make sure that it fits. By the way, it would be helpful when you're in this part of the process to have somebody help hold the sheet against the back of the door while you uh, draw out the lines. When you make your first cut, you want to cut on the very outside of any line that you, you drew. Um, it's going to turn out bigger than you wanted. But then what you can do is go through and check where it's too big and you can trim extra off because it's obviously easier to trim off extra. You can't replace uh, material if you get it too short. So now you can see we've got the panel fit in as best as we can, it's close. Um, for the most part, the sides are tight. Uh, the bottom's tight naturally because I shoved it all the way down into that groove between the door body and the window before I measured, started measuring and drawing out the lines to make the cuts. So um, the only place we've got is up through here where we've got some daylight showing through, but we've got a fix for that. We expected that because there's no way you're going to be able to cut these things perfectly to size unless you get really lucky. So the next step is to put some material in here to fill the gap wherever we have daylight shining through. 
So the way that we're going to fill the gap around the top is using this hook and loop adhesive tape, which is the same thing as Velcro, but Velcro is actually a brand name, but it's the same type of material. Um, and all we're going to use is the loop part. So this roll has the softer loop side and this roll has the rougher hook side and together they can um, stick together to create Velcro. Uh, but what we need to do is just to simply take this and we're going to run it along the edge here so that it's partly stuck onto here and hangs over so the soft loop material creates a nice barrier um, that sticks between the blackout panel and the gap between it and the top of the window. Now what you're going to want to do is the panel will go in this way into the door. Um, that's the way the door is shaped. So uh, this will be the inside of the panel. This will be the outside of the panel. And what you actually want to do is stick this on the outside of the panel. So when you push it into the window, um, this fuzzy part is bent over and that fuzzy part that sticks up will fill that gap between the blackout board and the window. Now what you can see I did is I took an X-Acto knife and you can use a pocket knife or a sharp knife from your kitchen and I just cut about a quarter inch or about, about a quarter to a third of the way up uh, to peel back this uh, plastic to get, the, get to the adhesive. We don't want the whole strip to come off because we don't want this part up here to be sticky because uh, we want it, once we put it on the board, we want it to be able to be free to move around. Now what I'm doing here is as I'm moving along, I'm watching and just having, making sure I stick this to the board and have the top of the board meet right where uh, the edge of that uh, plastic begins. Now as you can see, we've started to really close up most of the gaps here. We don't have much light shining through. We have a couple little spots. Uh, where we'll add some of that Velcro over here as well. Uh, and then we'll actually go through a process of taping the back side of this a little bit to stiffen this up. In order to stiffen this piece of Velcro up a little bit, I'm gonna take some electrical tape and I'm just gonna tape uh, the back of here. So what I did is I took this half inch electrical tape and kind of felt along as I put it on here and put roughly the bottom half of the tape along the top edge of this board and then just rubbed it in to the uh, Velcro strip while kind of pushing the Velcro strip down. So that kind of forces it out more and gives it a little bit more um, rigidity. Now we should have a pretty good fit. And you can see that we may have a slight, slight gap um, in one spot, but you're not, that's not going to be able to transmit enough light from the inside of the car to the outside of the car at night for anybody to be able to see that. So the last step we have is to paint the outside of this with a flat black spray paint so that at night it looks like the windows are simply tinted with really dark tint, but they are completely blacked out so no one can look, see in even if they put their face right up to the window. So this is what it looks like with the blackout uh, board installed in the window. 
Uh, during the day, it's hard for people to even tell that that's not just a tinted window unless they look close. And definitely at night, if you're at a campsite or sleeping in a parking lot, no one's going to be able to tell. It'll just look really dark like they can't see in and they'll assume that it's tinted. So there's that window compared to one without anything on it and you can really see the difference. In many cars like my Toyota Prius, you'll probably have some windows in addition to the main windows, uh, like these smaller windows here. And so the best way I've found to create the blackout panels for these is a simple process that I'll show you now. And I just use a plain piece of uh, printer paper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it in there and, and, and really work it into that space uh, so that I can find all the edges of the window. Then I'll use a marker to uh, draw the outline. So as we've done with all of our uh, blackout panels when we've uh, cut them out, we start with the template that we're using and I'll cut it on the outside of the black line so it's going to start out by being a little oversized but then we'll be able to trim it down to the perfect fit. I've got some scrap corrugated board here, so what I'm going to do is there's actually one side of this window that's flat, so I'm going to put it on the flat side of the board so I don't have to cut any there, and then I'm going to draw this out. Now since I cut this large by cutting on the outside of the line, I'm going to cut this on the inside of the line so it's the same size as the template. Now one of the things we want to do before we go any further is we want to take some electrical tape and just make a little tab for this because once we push this into that little window it's going to get stuck in there pretty securely and we won't have any way to get it out once that happens. So what we're gonna do is just take a little piece of tape and create a little tab we can use to pull it out. Doesn't have to be perfect, just uh, we want something to where we can pull this out of that little window well. So now we'll just try, see how this fits. And it actually fits really good. There may be a little bit of gapping on the sides, but the good thing about this window is that it actually has a black border around it. So it's okay if there's gap on this one, we won't have to create anything to fill that gap because uh, this fits in perfect. Here's what that window looks like from the outside when we insert this pad, this uh, blackout panel. You can see it fits nice and tight. And once we uh, paint that with that flat black spray paint, then it'll completely black that out. After a couple of weeks in use, I realized that under certain lighting conditions, people could see that I had boards in my windows. So, I decided to improve the system by getting the windows tinted. I didn't get blackout tint, or what they call limo tint, because that is illegal in many states. The tint that I had installed was like factory tint on most vehicles, and it darkened the windows just enough to hide the texture of the panels. Now, when I put the panels in the windows, 
it simply looks like I have really dark tint, but I can remove the panels when I drive. The tint, combined with the panels and the sunscreen, create a system that provides complete privacy. Well, that is how I created the blackout panels. In the next video, I will show you how I installed the sunscreen and dealt with visual gaps around the sunscreen on the windshield. In the meantime, thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you get convenient links and notifications on YouTube when I post future videos.